You're listening to the Packernet Podcast Network. It's only a kick, a jump, a block. It's only a serve. It's only a tackle, a run. It's only for the fans. After all, it's only pressure. You got this. Adidas. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome once again to the Packernet Podcast. I am your host and resident panelist, as always, Ryan Schlipp. Check us out online, packernet.com. Find me on Twitter, pack underscore that AF. Well, I decided yesterday I was just going to be nice and give myself the day off. It was a good day. Actually, today technically is a good day. Today's Sunday for me, for those that don't know. But the last two days, the uh, the family's been out and about, so I made myself a uh, pork butt. Took uh, It took almost 17 hours, I think. I really thought I was going to be done fast, um, but man, we got to we got to 190, and it took several hours to, to push the temperature the rest of the way. But I watched a few movies, and then uh, today, it's about 4.30, I've watched, I think, two episodes, maybe three, two, three of Peaky Blinders, um, suggested by Mr. Kurt Benkert, so I figured I'll, I'll try one episode and see if it's any good, and if not, then I'll find a movie that I want to watch, and uh, it's pretty good, so I'm like, you know what, you better run downstairs and do the podcast, or you're just going to say, forget it, I'm not doing it, I'm just going to watch this show. So we're doing the podcast, and then it's uh, back to Peaky Blinders. It's a Netflix thing. It's a, uh, what is it? I don't know. Gangster movie, kind of, I guess. Takes place in early 1900s Britain. So there's there's weird, um, not demographics, but like groups. You've got like the communists, and then you got the IRA over in Ireland, who somehow factor in there as well. They have some kind of a name, but I don't remember what it is. And then this group, Peaky Blinders, which is like a local gangster group. I don't know, it's pretty good. Anyways, why don't we start off, as usual, with the uh, the news and notes type stuff. But we are officially, I believe by the time that this podcast is uploaded, nine days away. I think it's the July 28th, so it's the, 17th, or the 18th for me, so I'm 10 days away. So you officially are nine days away, just basically a week away. That's so crazy. I, I, I mentioned it before, I do hate that it's on a Wednesday, because I'm going to be saying, dude, it's this week, and then, you know, Monday and Tuesday are just going to be miserable. But that's it, man. I mean, once once we're there, we're off and running. The As far as, like, actual NFL football, NFL news, I know there's no games, but there usually aren't. I mean, football season is six months long, and we're talking about 17 games. So most days during the season, there's not actual games, but we're still in the midst of the football season. And so there's going to be news, there's going to be reports, there's going to be contracts, there's going to be injuries, unfortunately. We're going to get a clearer picture. We've got the 53 cut down, which takes place in several phases. So uh, yeah, it's, it's off and running in just over one week. It's, it's, it's weird. It's almost like it doesn't feel real, which is a, a statement I make like when I'm about to have a kid. <laughs> so it feels like a ridiculous reason to use that phrase, but it just... It doesn't feel real. Like, dude, football starts in like a week. It's like, oh, yeah, yeah. Like, I get it in my brain, but I just, it's like, nah, not really, though. Like, no, seriously, it's in a week. It's like, nah. I get that it's like a week, but it's probably like a month or something. It has not clicked. It's also just a really weird off-season, you know, because I just, usually you have such a clear picture of the team. I just feel like there's, even beyond Aaron Rodgers, obviously that's the biggest thing, but there's just, there's so many questions. I mean, we don't, there's so many questions about a lot of the guys on this team. First of all, it's almost as though the Packers had two drafts this past year because the draft last year, basically none of those guys really got much playing time because of COVID and, you know, Jordan loves a quarterback and all. So there's just, there's so many guys that we just haven't really seen that I think are going to get a much bigger chance. And then there's a bunch of guys this year that I think are going to get a big chance. And so, you know, I mean, wide receiver, I think there's giant questions at wide receiver. Number one, Devontae Adams in a contract. Now, I'm I'm 98% sure they're going to work it out. I'm going to leave that 2%, but it's just, it's, it's, this is 
basic and as straightforward as it comes as far as standard operating procedure for the Green Bay Packers. You never, ever let a guy like Devontae walk. But that's that's number one. Then, I, legitimately, you've got Funches, who is a wild card. Again, according to PFF, he is and has been the best wide receiver on this team not named Devontae Adams. He has graded out consistently every year better than Alan Lazard and MVS. That doesn't mean he's going to come in and be better. There's also questions of what about scheme. Obviously, you can't take Alan Lazard off the field all the time because it's not a one-to-one comparison, so we're talking about apples and oranges. But at the same time, you can't just put them both on the field and be like, well, Lazard, you stand out there, and then uh, Funchess, you basically stand on his shoulders and do something else. I mean, there's one spot. There's questions about Amari Rogers. What is his impact going to be? Um, I, you know, well, I probably shouldn't get into that, but there's, there's some guys that are going to get cut and might be some surprise cuts. Offensive line. Is David Bakhtiari going to start? When is David Bakhtiari going to start? Who else is playing and where? I'm assuming it's going to be David Bakhtiari left tackle, Elton Jenkins left guard, Josh Myers at center, Billy Turner at tackle, and then just a question at right guard, but I don't know. Is Royce Newman going to win out that right tackle spot? If so, is Billy Turner going to kick into right guard? If not, can Newman play guard? Is Cole Van Landen next up? Is John Runyon next up? With David Bakhtiari, who's starting there? And then what is our offensive line? Is Elton Jenkins going to be starting out there? And then is it John Runyon at left guard or Cole at left guard or, or Stepniak at left guard? Who's playing left guard? John Dietzen? Ben Braden? Tight end. What is Tunyon going to be? Is he going to take another step and actually become a legitimate, consistent top-end weapon? Is he going to regress a little bit? Because most of his production came by way of touchdowns, and those are very fleeting. And if you take away all the touchdowns, he was just a subpar tight end. Mercedes Lewis, does he have anything left in the tank? Jace, is he going to break out, or is he going to stay the same level? What does Josiah DeGuara bring now that he's healthy or eventually becomes healthy? Is there anybody else that might contribute? Dominique Daphne seemed like the Packers kind of liked him when he was able to be on the field. How much of a role is A.J. Dillon going to play? Is it going to be 50-50 between the two? Is maybe A.J. Dillon going to get more snap? As far as true running back snaps, maybe A.J. Dillon is more of that guy while Aaron Jones is a running back slash receiver slash whatever. Who's the number three and are there going to be four? Is it going to be Patrick Taylor? Is it going to be Dexter? Is it going to be Kylan? Who's going to step up next to Kenny? I know we're going to have guys like Zadarius slot in once in a while, but we still need somebody. How good is TJ Slayton going to be? Is he just going to be a run defender? Is he even going to be good as a run defender? Is Kingsley going to finally step up? Is Rashawn going to take another step? Is Zadarius going to bounce back? Is Preston going to bounce back? What are we doing at linebacker? Is it Chris Barnes and Kamal Martin? Is that what we're doing? What about Isaiah McDuffie? Is he going to slot, slot in there? Could we possibly see Ty or Oren step up? Because there's, there's nobody that's just dominant at linebacker. I would say that's more or less wide open, even though we have a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and there, there's a list. It's, it's not going to be that hard to break into it. Is Kevin King the number two? How long is Kevin King the number two? Is Eric Stokes going to be out most of the year? This is going to be his redshirt year? Could we see him week one? Is, is, is Kevin King not even going to make it to week one? Could he eventually get traded? Who's going to be the slot guy? Is it Chandon? Is Josh Jackson going to get a shot? Is Kadar Holman going to be that guy? Is Shamar Jean Charles going to be that guy? What about the number three safety? And is, are they going to have a role possibly in either the slot or at linebacker? What about Savage? Is he going to stay up or is he going to regress? Was that just kind of a fluke the second half of last year? It's, it's the, I mean, it's very much, if everything breaks right, this is one of the best teams ever. If everything breaks wrong, this team is garbage, even with Aaron Rodgers. Now, obviously, it's probably going to land somewhere in between, and you can kind of say that about most teams, but not really. There's a lot, a lot of question marks here. And so again, kind of going into it, you know, when people say, what do you, what do you think the record's going to be and all that stuff, even with Aaron Rodgers coming back, I mean, you want to be optimistic and say the offensive line isn't going to lose much of a step and it's probably going to get better because of Amari, because of Funches, um, because of um, Dylan getting a larger role and Josiah DeGuara coming back and all these different pieces that are adding to the team with the only real setback being Josh Myers in place of Corey Lindsley. But who knows? And then you look at the defense and say, well, it's it's basically the exact same defense, except some of these guys gain experience. Rashawn gets another year under his belt. Preston, you know, with all this money on the line, and he's slimming, slimming down, and all reports are he's going to come at it real hard. More than likely, he's going to bounce back. Another year for all these young linebackers. Forgot about Devondre Campbell, by the way, although I don't expect much from him, but he's on the list of variables. So it makes things, it's harder to get 
in a weird way, at least for me, it's harder to get excited because I don't even know what I'm looking at. But that's going to make the offseason even more exciting because there's so many questions. Training camp is going to be massively exciting, and the preseason is going to be incredibly exciting because it's usually the preseason is when the guys that you know aren't st- are starting are not playing. All right, you're not going to see Rodgers. You're not going to see much of the offensive line. You're not going to see much of the starting wide receivers. It's all just backups fighting to see who's going to actually make the 53, who's going to go on the practice squad, and who's just going to get cut. That's not really the case. We need to figure out who our wide receivers are. We need to figure out who our offensive line is. We need to figure out at least who the number three uh, running back is going to be. And then there's a ton of questions on defense. I don't want to run through the whole thing again. But I think that makes the whole thing exciting. And again, just about a week away. In other news, AJ The Sauce Dylan officially has a sponsor. And appropriately, it's Mott's Applesauce. Which made me think that, once again, I went with the wrong nickname. Pack Daddy? What am I going to, like a pack of cigarettes? What, what, what is my sponsor going to be? Am I even allowed to take on a cigarette sponsor? By the way, I totally would do it. I'm just saying. This is, this is a, one of the biggest companies in the world, and they're not even allowed to advertise anymore. They got all this ad money. They can't even use it. I will take all of it. <laughs> for, the, for the small price of about a million dollars, I'll slip in a little bit about cigarettes once in a while. Just like subliminally, you know, not like an overt advertisement, but man, oh man, these Packers just stress you out, don't they? Makes you want to kick back and just smoke a whole pack of cigarettes. (laughs) I feel guilty just joking about it. I don't know if I could do it. A million bucks, I'd do it. I don't care. You're a grown-up. You figure it out. You know, what do you, what, you started smoking because I started talking about cigarettes, you child? Who actually buys stuff because of advertisements anyway? I shouldn't, I shouldn't say that. That's wrong. Advertisers, listen. Everybody buys what I say, so just don't just ignore me. Never mind. I forget that whole thing. Moving right along, I, I don't know what causes these things, but every once in a while, there are just flare-ups of fights, and um, we've seen it several times. We've seen it with the Vikings and the Bears or whatever. Just you go on Twitter, and there's just these little pop-ups of just angry tweets, and usually it's it's. Vikings or Bears fans just randomly lashing out at, at the Green Bay Packers. And it's like, it's just, it's so stupid. And these things end up spreading like wildfire, usually by Packer fans, because the Bears fans are so stupid in their attempt at trashing the Packers. Because, listen, and it's not, I'm not saying all Bears fans are stupid. I'm just saying if, if your goal is, as a Bears fan, I'm going to go on Twitter and explain why the Packers are such a garbage franchise, you already lost. There is not a single argument that a Bears fan can make against a Green Bay Packers fan. There's almost no argument anyone can make against the Packers, period. Just based on common sense, the Packers have done very well over the length of their entire history, especially the last 30 years. Yeah, they had bad eras, but some franchises, (laughs) Bears, um, their bad era has lasted basically the entire existence of the team, with a few random exceptions. So, you know, I don't mind if you're a Bears fan saying, I don't like the Packers. In fact, I hate the Packers, you know, probably because they beat us all the time, et cetera, et cetera. But actually making it your goal to prove how dumb the Packers are is silly. Um, And I don't really even find it super worth talking about, but I was bribed to talk about it, so I'm going to do it. One of those things, and there have been a couple, is... uh, it's not even from this guy on Twitter, so I'm not even going to mention who it is. But what, what is that stupid Deadspin? I don't know who re- does anyone read Deadspin. I, that was like cool for like a year. Anyways, there's a guy on there. It's it's like they try to be edgy and, and like barstooly, but they just kind of suck at it, as evidenced by the fact that Barstool is a massive company and Deadspin is trash. But there's some guy, and I'm not even going to look it up because I don't care. But there's a guy. If you know, you know. And every year he writes articles that are called Why Your Team Sucks. And the bottom line is that the guy is 1,000%. He is one of those guys who is just angry with his life. He's very likely overweight. He does not um, do well with the ladies. And he hates the world. And you can just tell by by the way that he writes. You can just, he's just an angry human being. And so I've read a couple, like three, and they're the exact same every time. Why your team sucks, Green Bay... And by the way, I think he's a Vikings fan, so all that anger is especially um, pointed at the Green Bay Packers. You know how some comedians... Like, good comedy can be real edgy sometimes, but the point of it is to be funny. 
There are some people who try to mask anger by calling it comedy, and that's this guy. He's just a hateful person, and he, he calls it a joke. It was just a joke, dude. What, you can't take a joke? It's, it's, I mean, it's, it wasn't funny, though. You know what I mean? Like, the... So anyways, his, his whole shtick is to just call Packers fans redneck racists. That's it. That's the whole thing. They're a bunch of rednecks. They're a bunch of racists. They all are racist. They think that they're cool, but they're racist. And they shouldn't be relevant because they're racist. I mean, it's it's not funny, it's not interesting, and it's not unique or, or clever. It's boring, and it's it's not even... I mean, I did the segment for a while, Boom Roasted, and I think mine were a little bit more creative, and they literally were about five minutes of thinking about stuff. This is his big thing, and, and the best he can come up with is Packer fans are racist. They're a bunch of... Ra- people from Wisconsin are racist. Okay, dude. But anyway, some Bears fan said, my favorite Packers description ever from Deadspin. So obviously, this is what he thinks as well. And I can't read all of it because... Language is kind of ridiculous. But he says, and and again, this is a Vikings fan being posted by a Bears fan. So the first sentence, just automatically, your eyes are going to roll back into your head. The entire Packers uh, culture is centered around pretending. Pretending. Posted by a Bears fan who believes every year that they're going to have a great team. Who is currently pretending that Justin Fields is already a great player. Vikings fans everywhere pretending that they know that the the Vikings are going to win the North. They've all been pretending that the team is going to be trash because Aaron Rodgers isn't coming back. They pretend every year that the Packers are going to fall off. They pretend every year that Rodgers is washed up. And they pretend every year they're going to have a good football team, and they never do. But yeah, Packers fans are pretending. Okay. They say, you pretend you invented bratwurst. Who, who in the, who, you absolute idiot, believes that bratwurst was invented in Wisconsin? You absolute idiot. Wisconsin is, is of German heritage, just like Chicago is Polish and Minnesota is Viking. I mean, quite literally. It's Nordic. Nobody is confused about the fact, like most parts of the world, you had people from places in Europe come here and bring their food, Right. Just like people in New York and, you know, the the eastern parts of the country don't believe that they invented spaghetti. People from Italy came here and brought their food. You pretend you own the team. Again, everybody understands the arrangement. You pretend Reggie White wasn't a nutjob bigot. Again, this is what I'm talking about with the hateful stuff. That's not a funny... This is not somebody who's just joking around. This is an incredibly hateful, angry person. Reggie White is a legend. He was a fantastic human being. He was a great football player, a a great human being. And he also happens to be dead right now. And to say something like that is disgusting. And he goes on to say, and you pretend Vince Lombardi was history's awesomest dictator. I don't even know what that means. We pretend... (laughs) Your best shot at the Packers, you absolute idiot, is that we pretend Vince Lombardi was some kind of a great coach. You see what I mean about just being angry and stupid? It's not funny. It's not clever. It's not accurate, but yet this guy is is a revered writer for Deadspin or, or whatever, and people actually look forward to this column every year. Again, if it was actually funny, yeah, take some shots. This is stupid. He goes on to say, you have Lombardi to thank for the current football culture. Not really, but okay. Where players are treated like five-year-olds and being stoic, humorless, blank of a coach is somehow a revered attribute. What are you talking about? Who are you talking about? I mean, I, I guess he was talking about McCarthy. This is probably from a while ago. But uh, so, so Mike posted this saying this is the best description of the Packers ever. I'm sorry, is that supposed to be a shot that Lombardi created something? Which I don't even think that that's true. But we're, let's pretend that somehow Lombardi's culture permeated all the way through to Mike McCarthy and Matt LaFleur to cause them to be like most coaches, strict and stern and serious and about the business. Let's pretend that that's true, and let's pretend the Packers are the only ones, and the Patriots who have won more Super Bowls than anybody in the last however many years. Let's pretend they're not the exact same way, and the Steelers don't operate the same way. In all successful organizations, let's pretend that they all just hang out, have fun, party, get drunk, and snort coke, and they just have a good old time, and then they go out in the field and they win a bunch of games. But the Packers, they're stoic, and they're serious, and they take things seriously. First of all, that's stupid. Second of all, we're talking about a successful franchise. How are you attacking a franchise for the way they do business when the way that they do business is better than the way that everybody else does business, except for the other teams maybe that operate in the exact same fashion? Maybe your team sucks because they don't do it right. 
So I, I, I retweeted something, and I may as well read that too, but, but what I said at the top was, Bears fans are really bad at this. And it's true, and Vikings fans are too. And, and again, largely it's because you're fighting a losing battle. You can't win it. You can't win the my franchise is better than your franchise when you are not the Packers, right? Maybe, I mean, if the Patriots want to do that, they can try, but their team is trash right now, so that would be iffy. That's a risky proposition for a team that's trying to choose between Cam Newton and some rookie. Bucks fans have been relevant basically one year in most people's existence. Most most Bucks fans are going to pop off at the mouth, do not remember the year 2000. And the rest probably weren't even fans of the Bucks back then. Just no, nobody was. But anyways, there was there was uh, Matt Karstensen. Must be another Vite. Is he a Bears fan? He must be, because I said, uh, yeah, Bears, Bulls, whatever. Whenever I see the SEN like that, I just assume Vikings fan. But he says, imagine still referring to yourself as Title Town when you're actually the team with the fifth most titles, and only one of those has come during the modern football era. Again, do you get how bad these guys are at this? This is, this is an embarrassment. That, that's the reason why it's so hard to even get into arguments with them, because it's just, it's, I mean, I don't know, maybe they, for all I know, the guy's got like a, a disorder. I don't want to get canceled because I attacked some guy with, with autism on Twitter. I don't, you know, I don't know, I don't know what's going on. You got to be careful these days. But this is, I'm, I'm on Twitter and this is all, and it's like these little flare-ups where they just get so angry out of no. It's like, I don't know if they like congregate and they start getting all jacked up and drunk talking to each other about, dude, Justin Fields is going to be so good. I can't wait to take out the stupid. Pl-. And then they come on here and they try to regurgitate the optimism um, and their anti-Packersness and they come into the real world, the open air where other people exist, including Packer fans, and they test out those theories that they talk about amongst each other and just get ripped to shreds because it's like, you need to just hang out in your basement with your other Bears fans, friends, if you're going to talk like this, because it's not going to go well. And it's it's also hilarious when you have other teams jump in. They're like, look, dude, um, I'm not even a Packers fan. I, I, I can't tell you how many times I've seen that. I'm not even a Packers fan, but you're an idiot. I've seen that so many times under my comments, retorts, whatever. And I try not to even comment because, again, there's something wrong with this guy. One has come in the modern era. I mean, maybe he's like 15 years old, so modern era means in his lifetime. So it also explain why he's such an idiot. But, um, yeah, I, I, there's, there's no description of the modern era in which 2000 is the beginning of the modern era. By the way, only 20 championships have been won in the modern era. About half of them have been won by the Patriots, leaving about... 10, 12, whatever uh, championships to be won among 31 other teams, and the Packers happen to have one of them. The Bears do not. The Vikings do not. The Lions do not. And that doesn't even touch on the fact that the Packers have been pretty dominant through that entire time, better than every other team in the NFC North. Leaving all that aside, the term title town is a term that was given to the Packers. You don't lose titles like that. Just like Dallas is is still America's team. Why? Because it's, it's, the, it's a... It's a title that they came up with. It doesn't go away. You don't get to just take it. Like, we're title town now. I mean, you can try that. We've tried that with Dallas once in a while. Like, the Packers should be title town now. Guess what? It doesn't stick. Dallas has been garbage for 20, 25 years now. They are still and always will be America's team. That's just how it works, man. If anything, the Patriots would make more sense. Number one, the name, Patriots. It's a very American type thing. And they've been dominant. That should absolutely be America's team if we're going to name a team America's team. Maybe if Washington changes its name to, uh, you know, the, the Washington lobbyists or whatever, we can call that America's team. That would be fitting. But that's not how that works. And aside from all of that, it's not Super Bowl town. It's title town. It has nothing to do with the modern era. It has to do with the fact that the Packers have more titles than any other team, and that's not debatable. So even if you could transfer ownership, the Packers would still own it because they have more titles. Not Super Bowl town, not Super Bowls in the modern era town, title town. It wasn't even given, that name wasn't even given to us in the quote-unquote modern era, which has been in his lifetime, which has been in the last 20 years, or however old this 14-year-old is. And as many people have pointed out, the Super Bowl trophy is named after Vince Lombardi. So again, even if we were to strip the Packers of it, just so we can start over and say, okay, let's start over, let's create a new criteria to find out which team should be called Title Town? Because we want to see like who officially should be. The Packers would get it. Again, if you wanted to call it Super Bowl Town, you might go with uh, a different team. Here, here's a better question, though. 
Here's here's a better question for Mr. Bears nerd or the rest of the Bears fans or Vikings fans or anything else. What would the let's say we we wanted to come up with a cool name like Title Town. Let's let's stop focusing on how much you hate the Packers because we know we we know the Packers make you very sad. Here here's a better question that'll help lift your spirits, assuming that you can come up with an answer. But I'm sure you can. You guys are diehard fans, just diehards, man. Super diehards. Bears are awesome. Vikings are awesome. What would a name be? Come up with a cool name that. Of all the teams, if you had to think, which team does this fit the best, it would be your team. What would it be for the Bears? It's not title town because you don't own that. Certainly not quarterback, uh, you know, court. Not Victoryville. Could say loser lane, but that's not a good one. That's a bad one. So we don't want to do that. Again, if you were to, if you took title town and said, which of the 32 teams does this fit best? It fits the Packers the best because they have more titles than any other team in history. And there's probably a bunch of other names you can come up with that the Packers would, would, would own, right? If you came up with the criteria and said, uh, who's been the best at this, the Packers would win several of them. Can you think of one thing? Think of one thing in which your team stands alone. What is it? You can't, can you? You can't. So how about this? Stop messing with us. You can't win this battle. You can't. The best you can do is hope that you have a very good year and win the Super Bowl, and for one year, you're better than the Packers, and you can ride that out all year until next year when you're not. That's it. That's the best you can do. But coming out in July and starting to talk about how the Packers are not that good and the Bears are better or the Vikings are better, you're just making yourself look like an idiot, and you need to stop. Again, this can be a very cordial... I think I've been very cordial for the most part. I think there's plenty of reason for the Vikings to Vikings fans to be extremely optimistic and Bears fans to be extremely optimistic. But you cross the line into making yourself look like an idiot when you start bad-mouthing the Packers. And for some reason, there's... Like, maybe it... it <laughs> oh, it's crazy to me because this is one of the few times you don't have to do that, right? Wait until November when the Packers have you know, playoff aspirations and, and the Bears are basically out of the playoff. At that point, that's when you start trashing the, the Packers because you got nothing better. Today, you do have something better. You have, you, you, the, the offseason is for optimism. Now is when you look to the future and you say, our, this is our time. Bears fans, this is your time, man. You got Justin Fields, let's go, son. Vikings fans, you got a good team this year, Right? Maybe not for a long time, but this is this is our this is your year, man. Serious. Lions fans, you guys got nothing, but Bears and Vikings fans, you should be excited about the future, but yet you come on Twitter and start talking about how in the past the Packers have sucked. <laughs> <It's> like <laughs> you're such an idiot. You're such an idiot. That would be like me going up to a guy that's five pounds overweight and saying, dude, you're so fat. <laughs> like, why are you doing that? Don't, that's a bad strategy, man. Going up to a millionaire and being like, dude, remember when I was poor? It just, it doesn't make sense, right? Like getting up in Conor McGregor's face and being like, remember that time you broke your leg? <laughs> such a sissy. And then just cracking him right in the mouth, if you can even get the punch off. It's a bad strategy. You're going to lose. You're, you're walking into a fight you can't win. Stop doing that. You're stupid. Stop it. You have to look to the future. That's all you've got. Look to the future. You have to. You might want to be measured about it because if you pop off at the mouth, I promise you there's a lot of Packer fans who are taking receipts right now. If you pop off and you're too loud about how great Justin Fields is going to be, right, that guy who said that Mitch Trubisky was already better than Rodgers, it's been like three years and that guy still gets brought up about once a week and that's going to be going on for at least another 10 years. So think it through. But, I mean, if, if, even if you're not loud about it, you can be privately optimistic. There's nothing wrong with being optimistic about the future, but you can't rehash battles you've already lost and say, I won that battle. No, you didn't. You've lost. You've been losers for your entire franchise's history, Vikings fans. You suck. You've always sucked. Look to the future and hope that there's going to be a day, someday, one day. Look at the Bucks right now. They've always been trash. As far as I've been concerned in my entire lifetime, I've never seen the Bucks be good at anything. But here they are today, about to win the whole shebang. That can be you. Look to the future, Bears fans. This is it. Stop looking to the past. It's a dark history for you. Look to the future and just hope and pray that Rodgers is gone at least in a couple years and uh, Fields is going to be great and uh, 
Pace will figure out how to draft without giving away all your picks so you can finally start building a team. Um, and you'll win for a while. You know, you'll be good at stuff. I just don't understand. I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't get it. Every time you say something, you sound stupid. Because at the very least, no matter what you can say about the Packers, it's worse for the Bears. They're, they're, I've never seen a, a, a really good burn. Because the fact of the matter is anything bad that Bears fans can actually say about the Packers, Packers fans probably agree, right? Like, pff, MVS, dude can't even catch. Yeah, dude, I know, it sucks. <laughs> Hopefully he gets better at that. Rodgers, he's such a crybaby. Uh, I know, right? It sucks. Hopefully he just comes back and, like, wins MVP again. That'd be crazy, right? He only got that one wide receiver. Like, I know. Best wide receiver in football, and that's it. Imagine how crazy it'd be if we had, like, an elite number two also, you know? Be super crazy. Be unstoppable, right? Good thing for you, we just have that one really good guy. Would really suck for you if we had something else. It's just, there's, there's, there's nothing. There's just nothing. So, I, I listen, I know Bears and Vikings and Lions fans, listen, you guys reach out to me all the time. I, I, I would love to keep it cordial. I, I have some level of respect for all three franchises and the direction you're going, and I can see a clear path for all three teams, all four teams, including the Packers, for where things can go really right and things can go really bad. And, and just as a, I've, I've become a bigger just football fan over the years, so I'm, I'm actually genuinely interested and curious and excited about how things go for all these teams. But if you just walk out of the shadows and try to hit me in the face with a baseball bat and miss every time, I'm not going to be nice. You can be a fan of your team and you can hate the Packers without hurting yourself. I don't what 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 do you gain from that? What do you, what do you gain from that? Anyways, why don't we go ahead and take a break here? Um I do a couple things. Uh some thank yous. First of all, thank you very very much to an anonymous donor. I know who it is, but he has to be anonymous. Thank you for the $100 donation to the Palmer Home for Children. By the way, I have not gotten to my goal, which is to to win this thing. But Malcolm, who uh, pledged to raise $20,000, is already there, $20,049. So thanks in large part to all of your help, or to those that did help. Um, this this money is going to feed an entire family for a year, and that is pretty awesome. It's cool to be able to be a part of that. Um, also, thank you very much to Mr. Michael Davis for the $52.50 donation. We are officially over the $1,000 mark. If you're asking what my goal is, there isn't an actual number. Uh, my goal is to get in the top five for donors, and the guy in fifth place has $1,210. I'm thinking in order to win this bad boy, it's probably going to need to be 2000 So I don't know if we're ever going to get there, but um, again, this money is going to a great cause. So if you're interested in doing something like that, Palmer Home for Children, links on Twitter and Facebook and all that stuff, or just reach out. Also want to say thank you to Mr. Kyle Bernston for upping his pledge. Uh, thank you very, very much for that. I want to remind everybody, because I kind of forgot and I feel bad about it. I got in this Palmer home thing. Um, we're still going after um, the goal of 300 patrons before the start of the season or after week one, that would be. And again, if it's, I know there's some new listeners here. If we get there, one person is going to be getting Green Bay Packers tickets. Um, I kind of backed off it a little bit because the Patreon thing, I think I've lost more patrons than I've gained, but it's still entirely possible. For as little as a buck a month, you can get in on Patreon help support this podcast and get involved in the giveaway. We are at 227, so we got 73 patrons to go. With the size of the audience, that could be done today. And uh, I'll just go ahead and give away a Packers ticket. But um, at the very least, for those of you that signed up or are like, is he even doing that thing anymore? Yes, I am. So go tell your friends. You can uh, sign up there, patreon.com forward slash pack underscore daddy. Otherwise, let's take a break. We'll be right back. Hey, U.S. Cellular customers, I've got good news. So don't hit skip forward just yet. I'm talking about their special customer event, Us Days. What's Us Days? It means exclusive offers just for their customers, just to say thanks, like up to $1,200 to upgrade to any new phone. No, I didn't just misread that. That's up to $1,200 off. They must really like you. Us Days at U.S. Cellular. Exclusive offers just for you, just to say thanks. Right now, U.S. Cellular customers get up to $1,200 to upgrade to any new phone. Terms apply. I want to tell you guys real quick about our new sponsor, Factor. Factor makes delicious, ready-to-eat meals, and they get sent right to your door. They have 35 different options every single week that you can choose from, including keto, calorie smart, vegan and veggie, and more. And there's even more to enjoy with over 55 nutrition-packed add-ons that help make your weekly meal planning even more delicious. There's no prep work. There's no messing up six different bowls. 
mixing stuff. Factor meals are 100% ready to heat and eat. No prep, no cook, no cleanup. Factor is also very flexible with your schedule. You can get as much or as little as you need by choosing between 6 to 18 meals per week. You can also pause or reschedule your deliveries anytime. Factor is less expensive than takeout, and every meal is dietitian approved. So head to factormeals.com slash packdaddy50 and use code packdaddy50 to get 50% off. That's code packdaddy50 at factormeals.com slash packdaddy50 to get 50% off. This episode is brought to you by Hyperice, the leader in advanced warm-up and recovery technology. They have tons of innovative products, like Venom-heated wearables to help soothe sore back muscles, Normatec compression boots to speed up recovery and increase circulation, and Hypervolt massage guns to improve mobility. Loved by athletes like Naomi Osaka and Erling Holland. Try them yourself. Get 10% off your order with the code MOVE at hyperrice.com. This episode is brought to you by Pepsi Wild Cherry. Pepsi Wild Cherry is bursting with delicious cherry flavor and a sweet, crisp taste that gives you more to go wild for. Getting wild may look different these days, but whether it's opting for a solo Friday binge watch or a big night out, everyone can indulge in their wild side with Pepsi Wild Cherry, also available in Zero Sugar. So grab a Pepsi Wild Cherry and get wild. Anyways, looking at a uh, more positive thing, and keeping up on these rankings and whatnot, as you know. And uh, ESPN, I believe it was ESPN, ranked 2021 who they think will have the best offensive lines. And I, I didn't expect it to be very high, i got to be honest. They had the Green Bay Packers ranked second on that list. Now, technically last year, the Green Bay Packers were number one. So it is a little bit of a slight decline, but you can't even be mad because they're behind the Cleveland Browns, who indisputably have a fantastic offensive line. I mean, to have ESPN come out and say, look, Cleveland's number one, but I think the Packers are still number two, that's really encouraging. Because even I, as a Packer fan, look at it and go, yeah, some question marks here. Never thought it would be bad, but that's pretty crazy. So um, according to this article, they have the Cleveland Browns projected pass rush win rate to be 65%. Now that's pretty low. They were at 71%, so they have that going down. The Packers are at 74. They have them going down to 65. But here's what they had to say about the Green Bay Packers at 65%. Their projected offensive line and their rank last year, David Bakhtiari, 6th, Elton Jenkins, ninth, Josh Myers, rookie, Lucas Patrick, 6th, Billy Turner, 3rd. Now, I believe this is all ranked based on, so it's position specific. So David Bakhtiari was 6th among tackles, Billy Turner, 3rd among tackles, Jenkins, ninth among guards, Lucas Patrick, 6th among guards. I, I believe that's what they're saying. I don't really But they go on to say it speaks of the quality of the Green Bay Packers offensive line that it can lose arguably the game's best center in Corey Lindsley, replace him with a rookie and still rank second. Something, maybe it's coaching or Aaron Rodgers or scheme, really works in Green Bay because pass pass block win rate seems to fall in love with uh, everyone when they get there, which really is true. The Packers have had, and I've said this before, they've had really, really, really good offensive lines since kind of forever, and that's one of the unheralded things. We know that they've had good wide receivers. We know they've had good quarterback. We kind of forget sometimes that with few exceptions, they've had some really great units up front. He goes on to say, it doesn't hurt for the Packers have had quite possibly the best left tackle in the game, anchoring their line for years in Bakhtiari, uh, though this analysis assumes that he'll be at full strength, which might not be a given considering he tore his ACL in late December. So again, another list and a little bit more love. The, the thing that's nice about it, and, and I'm skeptical of the pass block win rate thing. It's, it's a little bit different than what PFF uses, um, especially when they have Bakhtiari below Turner and Jenkins below Patrick. But still, it's nice that they at least inject statistics. They at least are using numbers and they have their own criteria. Like I've been asking a lot of people to do, watch the players, use data, use some kind of a, a strict criteria and then build out a model. And that's what they did. And they said, based on our model and based on the results last year, and based on what we see going forward, we see the Green Bay Packers as a second best line. Uh, the, and, and this flies in the face of a lot of, you know, again, Bears and Vikings and Lions fans who want to say stupid stuff. They want to get into fights about how Khalil Mack is, is so good and he's so much better. I had somebody reach out and say, um, 
Do you have any data about Zadarius getting double teamed or Khalil Mack? Because they, they're saying he's the most double teamed guy in football. So I went out and found data and statistics and gave it to him and said, here you go. Khalil Mack is not the most double teamed guy. That's J.J. Watt and Zadarius is second. And they went on to just disagree and say that he's a liar, even though it's they don't know. And so again, people pop off and they say ridiculous stuff all the time. You know, the Packers offensive line isn't that good. Our offensive line is so much better. You, you know, so... Corey Lindsley's gone. Just all these different things. But the fact of the matter is, although we don't know how good it's going to be, who's going to progress, who's going to regress, and obviously there's injuries for everybody, for every team, that possibility. But based on all the best available information, and you can build out your own model, but you're going to need some kind of statistics, some kind of data out there to do it. And and again, if you're not doing it before you look at the teams, you're, you're being dishonest. In other words, you need to build this whole thing out and, and how you're going to do it. This is the st- These are the statistics I'm looking at. This is the formula I'm going to use. And then you plug it in. You don't tweak it after the fact because then you're lying. You don't look at the stats and say, okay, our team is really good in this area, not so much this area, so I'm going to highlight this area. You're a liar. And you don't actually care about the truth. You just want to come up. And that's what most of the media does anyways when they come up with these weird random things, you know, those weird statistics, you know, the, the best uh, quarterback completion rate in the third quarter on, you know, Sunday afternoons, you know, like stupid stuff like that. So, and again, you, you can build out your own model if you want to, but the fact of the matter is, if you use actual data, actual information, the Packers generally rank quite highly. And in the areas in which they don't, most of the Packers fan base is, is understanding of the idea of, of, of the concept and, and is accepting of it. The Packers don't have great linebackers. Very few Packer fans are going to fight you on that. And that's, again, where I say if, if, if uh, some rival fans or some anti-Packer people come along and actually attack the Packers where they're weak, they're not going to get much resistance, other than some people who just want to fight. Like, you know, you pick on my linebackers, I'm coming for you, whatever. But, uh, but, no, but nobody's going to disagree. Like, yeah, I know, they're not very good. We don't invest because we don't invest in them. I'm sure if we tried to draft linebackers early, we'd do a better job than your trash team and your stupid GM. But we don't, and I wish we did, but we didn't, and it is what it is, and we're still going to beat you. But, yeah, good one. You got me. Not great linebackers. To- totally nailed it. Outside of the Lions, we might have the worst group of linebackers in the, in the division. Yikes. Egg on our face, right, guys? Jeez, don't bring up long snapper. You're really going to get us there. Ooh. But anyways, another uh, another pile of statistics that say the Packers are good. So there you go. If you didn't know, we're a pretty good football team and a pretty good offensive line. And again, there are questions. But the, the other thing I really like about the offensive line, and, and I've mentioned this several times, but it's made me very uncomfortable the fact that we were very thin and that if anybody goes down, we're in trouble. The th- I'm almost as excited, maybe even more excited about the depth, which is stupid, but injury, uh, injuries along the offensive line are almost a guarantee. Whether it's a quarter, a snap, a game, a season, guys are going to go down, right? It is an extremely violent and tenuous spot. The, you know, the guys are falling all over the place. They're going into your knees. They're landing on your ankles. You got running backs like A.J. Dillon smacking you right in your spine. I mean, it's, it's an incredibly violent position. And so not only is it important to really build up the trenches, but offensive line and defensive line, you got to have quality depth. And I'm telling you, this, this offensive line depth has got me so excited to, because you just feel invincible. And, and again, the Packers have had that in the past where you've got guys that are backups that are second string that legitimately, and we know because they did, can go to other teams and start. And when you have that, you're, you're invincible. I remember when guys would go down and be like, I don't care. We got Lane Taylor. I, n- I never was a huge fan of him starting, but he was a fine starter. As a backup, are you kidding me? He came in and it was seamless. You know, TJ Lang and JC Treader and just all those guys, man. At one point or another, they're starting as backups. You know, even, I don't, I don't know. I, I, I've always just, and, and again, it goes to the, to the credit of our offensive line coaches that have done such a good job getting these guys ready so that, you know, no matter the role, they're ready for it. And it's just, it's, 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 incredibly underrated. And I think uh, Packer fans, we kind of know it, but I don't think we give the Packers enough credit for what a great job they've done with the offensive line. And not only that, how much that's contributed to our success. I I, I say it all the time. I'm going to put it on a freaking t-shirt at this point. There's only two things you can do in football, throw and run, and you can't do either of them without an offensive line. And and I say it because there's, there's really no other position in which that's true. 
right? You don't need a good quarterback to run the ball. As long as you can hand off, right? Now, quarterback is clearly important because when you throw, which is probably the more important of the two, you want somebody that's really good at it and it's going to help you more than anything. But he's 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 wholly irrelevant. You can you can get college cast-offs to come in and hand the ball off. Passing the ball, running back isn't nearly as important. Without an offense, I mean, with a great offensive line, you can do Look at Dallas, what, two, three years ago? They were completely unstoppable because of the offensive line. Dak Prescott could sit there forever, completely untouched, and he could run. So there's wide open holes for him to run through. And running the ball, Ezekiel Elliott is a monster. He's incredibly fast and he's incredibly powerful. And the offensive line kept him clean for the first like six yards. So that offense was unstoppable because of the offensive line. Having really quality offensive lines is is just it's massively underrated, let's just say that. Anyways, there's a lot of other stuff I want to talk about. I've just been super ranty lately. I'm barely getting through any of this stuff. We've got uh, talk about Matt LaFleur and his system, uh, some sack news, uh, Packers poll that I wanted to go through. I want to talk about Packers finances. Tyler Dunn did an interview with Kurt Benkert. I wanted to go through that a little bit. We got some questions to go through. In fact, I may solicit some questions because I want to kind of ramp this thing up real quick and make sure that we got the pipeline full as we get closer, especially. Also, make sure you uh, follow on Instagram, Packernet Podcast, because uh, Jacob's going to be doing a lot more of those polls and questions and things like that. And I want to make sure to get you guys involved a lot more. So uh, again, make sure that you are following over there. But I'm going to go watch... uh, what is that show called? Bikini Bottom or something? Tilly Square? Bob's Your Uncle? I don't remember. But uh, I'm going to go watch my old British gangster show. You folks have yourselves a fantastic Monday. And as always, I'll talk to you tomorrow. Have a good one.